So there's absolutely no doubt about the fact that threshold training is one of the best types of training you can do. It should really be a part of everybody's training plan. The problem comes when you're not adding variety to your threshold training. That means that you're doing the same type of threshold work every week or even twice a week. In other words, you've got into a routine where this is a threshold session that you do and you don't change it. So today we're going to talk about how adding variety might help you absorb more out of that threshold training. And if I was a guessing man, I'd guess that 90 to 95% of the people listening or watching probably run threshold too quick. I do it a lot myself. And so we're also going to talk about how slowing things down a little bit, but potentially going that little bit longer might then lead to better results in training and better results ultimately in races, which might be what's important to you. But let's talk about it. The main purpose of today's video, we all know that Threshold is bloody brilliant. The best athletes in the world are doing it. I do it myself, it works wonders. The problem comes when you're out there dedicating your time, whether it's a Tuesday night, Thursday night, Sunday afternoon, and you really want to make sure that when you're out there, I know I certainly do, I wanna make sure that when I'm out there, I'm putting in the work, but I'm getting the most that I possibly can get from that work. I think there's a misconception sometimes in running that just because you were out there working, even if you were sitting in that heart rate zone, a threshold or interval, whatever you're doing, that it guarantees that you're gonna get some sort of an effect. But that's not always how it works. The purpose of training the body in any type of way, whether it's intervals, threshold, VO2 max, it doesn't matter. You're doing it as a means to break the body down. That means you're trying to break it down physically, make it tired, or stretch or put the physiology system under stress. When you do that, the body then reacts. If you do it too much or too hard, it reacts in a negative way and you almost get worse, which sucks. If you do it the right way, you break it down a little bit, you allow space and time for recovery, and when you go to do that type of training again, or perhaps race, everything has absorbed and you're in a better spot. You're in a, a fitter spot, whatever you wanna call it. The problem comes when you do the same type of training again and again. Every time that you do a type of session for the first time, it breaks the body down in a really new way, right? And then if you keep doing it over and over and over again, you end up in, in a rut of, am I really getting benefits here? Because I might not be breaking the body down enough to then cause a reaction which allows you to absorb it and move forward. So what I'm saying is by adding some variety to the threshold days, we're not talking about variety across the week, we're just saying instead of every Thursday doing a six mile tempo run, let's start to break it up a bit. Let's break it up into different ways to give the body more benefits so when you're out there doing the work, you're gonna gain a little bit more each time that you're out there. So let's start with identifying that sort of threshold area and, and what is threshold? So threshold is a range. It's not a very specific set number. For each athlete, it's gonna be a different range. For each athlete, you're gonna be able to sustain it for a little bit longer. Let's look today at keeping it as simple as we possibly can. You can break it down into zones, you can break it down into heart rates, and you might know yours already. But from a basic perspective, if you're starting at the bottom end of threshold, at the bottom end of your threshold, you're probably gonna be able to talk seven or eight word answer. That means if you were forced to have a conversation, you might not want to, but if you're forced into a conversation, you could hold about a seven to eight word answer. As that threshold rep or, or run goes on, and you get to sort of the higher end of your threshold, it's more like a three to four word answer. In other words, it's not easy, but it's comfortable enough that you can at least talk. You're not completely gassed. And if you are, you probably need to slow things down that little bit. But really the point of training in this threshold area, to cut it really, really simply, this is where your body's really efficient, right? but it's not too easy that you're not really gaining a huge amount from it. So it's like putting your body under just enough stress that it has to do something inside the physiology to make sure that it doesn't get stretched too much. In other words, it's that area right before things start to get much harder. If you get your threshold just right, you'll be able to sit at that effort and probably maintain pace. If you push it a little bit too hard, then what happens is you'll get to a point where this is no longer threshold and the level of difficulty will go up and up and up and you'll be forced to slow. 
It is a difficult enough area to predict, but my advice would be to do a progressive run and start at a pace that you know for sure is likely slower, much slower than your threshold. And then maybe every sort of three minutes or four minutes, you can pick the pace up a little bit, keep an eye on heart rate, keep an eye on pace, and then you'll likely get to a point that you realize this isn't threshold because it's gonna to start to feel hard and you'll notice yourself slowing. Then you can track back a little bit to, okay, maybe it was back at this pace, maybe it was back at that heart rate, and that might help you identify that threshold. So today's video is sponsored by Ketone IQ. I've been using Ketone IQ in races and in training. It really helped me in Dublin Marathon. If you haven't heard of Ketone IQ, there's a link in the description, but also if you're just about to watch any of the Tour de France, you're probably gonna see that almost every team on the tour will be using Ketone IQ. That's where I first sort of heard about it. And I feel like cycling is at a different level, you might say. You can comment below if you agree with me in terms of their sort of scientific approach to training, to racing, et cetera, et cetera. So if those guys thought it was beneficial, I thought I would check it out. So throughout this camp in St. Moritz and the other types of threshold training that you might consider doing is adding some intervals. I've done lots of threshold intervals and the key behind those again is when you get little rest periods, you can bring the heart rate down and you can bring the effort down. It helps to control the effort. And if you haven't gathered by now, that's super important when it comes to threshold training. So I've done some threshold intervals, five times 2K, four times 3K, and you've broken up the sort of effort and the effort, sorry, and you've added that recovery time. So you can often go a little bit quicker. When you're doing a sustained effort or a progressive effort, you often need to start a bit slower. So one of the benefits to adding intervals, you can tweak the interval length. The shorter the interval length, the quicker you can go. But remember that you're still trying to stay in that threshold area. So that max heart rate or that max effort should never go beyond threshold. So don't try to go too quick. Progress the rep length, bring down the recovery time. That's little ways to tweak threshold intervals. So the second type would be a sustained tempo run. This is probably looking at 20 minutes upwards and you will progress a bit longer. You could get up to 40 minutes, 45 but you still need to treat this with a layer of caution. You're not gonna start as slow as you might on the progressive run, but you also need to make sure that you're starting slow enough that as time goes on, you're not moving above that sort of threshold area. Another mistake would be that assuming because your heart rate's quite low, that you're still in threshold. The heart rate can take seven to 10 minutes to get up to roughly where it's gonna sit for the rest of the threshold run. And so do be careful in that early stages set off gently and then work your way into it, but quicker than you will in the progressive style. And so finally, the progressive style. Progressive style like I did today, and that means you're starting off at a really safe, safe pace. Safe heart rate, everything. You also will be looking to probably get up to threshold pace at around 60 to 70% of the completed threshold run. That means like me, if you're doing 10 miles, around mile seven, around mile eight, you wanna kind of be up at your higher end of threshold. If you're doing like four or five miles, six miles, well, of course, it'll be mile four or mile five. In other words, you're gonna move through the entire range, but in a slow way, not slow by pace, just you're not in any rush to get up to that high end of threshold. This is perfect for people new to threshold running and perfect probably for beginners to establish where threshold might be. And it probably maximizes time in threshold because you're sort of not rushing off, going too hard, spiking your lactate or spiking that effort and making a messier threshold day. So the progressive run is a bloody brilliant place to start. So I've been in St. Moritz now for five, six weeks. I've, I've been at altitude for a lot longer than that. And over the course of this entire period, threshold has played a pretty big role in what I'm doing. Of course, I'm doing other types of training because I've done videos in the past that if you get stuck just doing threshold, you're not gonna get the most out of your body, especially when it comes to getting closer to bigger races. Right now, the period of training that I'm in, I'm just building a layer of foundation. In other words, I'm just trying to get fit, aerobically strong, and almost ready to then go and train harder. When I get to the point that I can go and train harder, I want to have built a really nice foundation. Today's threshold session was 10 mile progressive run, and I started at 540 and worked all the way down to 510 per mile. 
you're looking at starting perhaps around sort of top end of zone two and then working all the way up to zone four. That means that I'm going from a heart rate of about 140 to 145, right up to about 170. And what I do is I aim to progress that in stages, maybe every sort of two miles. So I set off, I get into the rhythm, 540, and then I look to progress it. I've built up to that. I've already done six miles, I've already done eight miles, I've already done intervals. And so I haven't just gone out the door and jumped into a 10 mile progressive run. But when you do it in that way, in that nice progressive way, you're ensuring that you execute threshold in this not perfect way, because it never has to be perfect. But one way that you can make a real mess of threshold is by basically going a little bit hard too soon. If you go a little bit hard too soon and you push that lactate up, it's very difficult for it to come back down. It can take 15, 20 minutes sometimes just to come back down. And so if you're on a threshold run and you've set off a bit too quick, you haven't, you have. You've made a real mess of your threshold session. I was trying to defend you, but you really have made a mess of it. You haven't made a mess of training entirely because you will gain something out of that day, but the benefits probably won't be those threshold benefits that you were looking for. So by doing it in that progressive way, you're making sure that at least at the start, you haven't gone too hard, you haven't gone too fast. So I'm looking to just get into a rhythm and that's key to threshold. Threshold isn't always a pace or it isn't always an exact heart rate. Sometimes it's just finding that rhythm and then chipping away at it, making sure you don't push too hard too soon to make sure that you stay in those threshold zones. Lots more tips on joggingroom.com. You can check that out. Psychology, nutrition, strength conditioning, running training plans. It's 60 hours of tips. <clears throat> It's 12 hours of tips, I think 60 videos covering all kinds of tutorials and helping you with your running. Or you could check out the merchandise on joggingroom.com. There's plenty on there as well. But take care, like, subscribe, do all those lovely things and have a great day.